The dsum, the d average, and the d count functions are just like they sound. They sum up, average, or count up a range of cells that are based upon a criteria that you specify in a mini or sub database. So before I go ahead and add up all the cells and training videos here, if I have criteria before I add them up, like those who sold more than 75,000 in videos, then go ahead and let's set up this mini database, which I set up by simply selecting the column headers or labels for each column here, copying it and pasting it over here, and then changing the format so you can see that it's different from the database. And then all you have to do is, like if it's for videos, go ahead and say that it's going to be greater than or equal to 75,000. So there's the criteria that it has to meet before we can go ahead and add up the range over here. So this is greater than or equal to 75,000, and then holding down the control key, so is 91, 122, and 88. So down below, the total sum should be or will be, when I'm done, you can see is 379,000 and some change. So to go ahead and do this, let's scroll over, and I created another little, you could call it mini database, but my labels for the examples that I want to cover here to do the D average, D sum, and D count. So to go ahead and do the D sum, the D being the operative word database. So to sum up my database, let's go ahead and type in equals D S U M. And you can see right here in the pop up, it adds the numbers in the field column of records in the database that matches the conditions you specify. So with the highlighted, go ahead and hit the tab key to pop open the function. And there are the three arguments. First of all, it says, where's the database? So let's go ahead and scroll over here click and drag to select the database and then you can see up here in the formula bar well I don't remember what the next step is so if I want to go ahead and scroll back and look in the syntax here that's fine or if you don't want to scroll back and forth then come up here and click on the FX the function it'll open it up and show you what you've done so far and break it down give you a little bit more detail so there's the database A5 through E11 and it gives you the name the column labels for the database then down below in the field, you can see here, it gives a description, and it says the field is either the label of the column in double quotation marks or a number that represents the column position in the list. And we can do either or, we'll do both. First off, let's go ahead and do the double quotation marks because the field that we want to go ahead and add up, the column that is, is the videos. So open quotations, then videos, close quotes, and we can go ahead and move on to the criteria. And the criteria is a range of cells that contains the conditions you specify. The range includes a column label and one cell below the label for a condition. So there's our column labels and then one cell below for the condition. So we can go ahead and click on its collapsible dialog box button and then click and drag to select the labels and then the one cell down below for the condition. And then go ahead and hit the enter key on the keyboard to pop it back open. And then you can see the result before I go ahead and click OK, which is 379,000 and some change. And so if I didn't see what I was expecting, then I may want to double check my work until I can see the number that I'm thinking should come out. And if it does, go ahead and click okie dokie. And there you go. And remember, we came over here to double check our work by control clicking the cells here and coming down here and excellent, it worked out. Now we also have the other option when we, let's scroll over again, came back up here and double clicked within the cell as you recall, it says you can either choose it by the name of the column, the label for that column, or the index number for that column. And so with the database selected, how Excel numbers the columns is from left to right. The furthermost, which we can't see, let's scroll over a bit more, is the name column. So there's one, two. So that's going to be column two. So if I come up here in the formula bar and I delete in quotes the name of the column, but type in the column number, then hit enter, it brings up the same thing. So either or works. Now once you learn one of these, doing the others, like the D average or D count, it's pretty simple because it basically follows the same pattern. Let me go ahead and scroll back. The problem that I run into with this is that when I want to go ahead and do the next one, the average of the total, maybe I want to do the average for the total books. If I do that, then what keeps me from identifying which column I'm getting the sum and the average unless I specify it up here say this is the average total for the books this is the sum total for the videos and that's going to get a bit confusing and it's going to be based upon one condition here I can do multiple conditions but we'll do that in just a minute so to keep it simple let me go ahead and just delete this and delete the videos and just focus on the books here and so for the books let's set the condition 
under the books label here in the sub or mini database the criteria to say that we want to average all those sales that are above 130,000 so I'll do greater than or equal to make sure that the equals always comes after the greater than or less than symbol because if you do it before you're going to get errors and then we'll do 130,000 hit enter and then come up here underneath the average of the total and do equals d average there we go averages the values in a column in a list or database that matches conditions you specify so with it highlighted hit the tab key to pop open the function here where's the database go ahead and click and drag to select it or if you gave a name of it you named your range and then just type in the name as we learned in earlier training videos then hit comma and then the field we can type in quotes books or we can just give it the index number by going starting over the left hand side one two three so it's column number three type in three then comma and then the last and final argument in the syntax in bold is criteria which is going to be the row of labels and then down below the cell that contains the condition and then go ahead and hit enter and let's see if it checks out so it's taking anything that's greater than 130,000 which is 146 133 146 again and let's compare 142,000 down below 142 well that's 157 this is 156 well you can go ahead and select it come up here to the number group and go ahead and decrease the decimal and we can decrease it until we get it rounds up here to 142,157 for the final one let's go ahead and scroll over for the count total let's go ahead and count up the number of employees that in consulting made hundred seven thousand dollars or more so to do that we want to go ahead and delete the criteria here for greater than or equal to 130,000 in books because I don't want it to be based upon books you can see where I run into the problem because if I'm looking at consulting and it's based on the criteria of what's met in the books then the count is going to be based upon the criteria for the books and not the consulting so you can see where you can run into issues also you can see an advantage in that if you want to go that route but in any case I want to keep it simple and let you do all the complicated calculations and how your database works so for consulting let's go ahead and do greater than or equal to 107,000 and you can see it over here it's getting the average total here but again that's for column 3 which is books if it's greater than or equal to the 107,000 in consulting okay what a mess let's delete that come over here to the count of total type in equals d count and then you got two you got the d count and then the d count a the d count counts the cells containing numbers in the field column of records in the database that matches the conditions you specify or down arrow counts non-blank cells now we learned about the count and count a functions in an earlier training video but nonetheless you can see them here if you want to go the d count route let me go back to the d count and not d count a and then hit the tab key to pop open the function where's the database we gotta scroll over click and drag to select it hit comma and then it says next what is the field and it's going to be the last one here we can just go ahead and do open quotes consulting the name for the column of the field make sure it's spelled correctly and then go ahead and type in comma to go to the last argument in the syntax which is the criteria it's the mini sub database here go ahead and click and drag the row of labels then go down to select the criteria one cell down then hit enter and it says the total that earned 107,000 or more for consulting was two by the way you can come over here and flip that if you want to go to less than or equal to 107,000 and there was a total of four that earned 107,000 or less and you can do multiple criteria maybe you want to go ahead and say for the count of those who are going to get bonuses maybe you want to flip this back and go to greater than 107,000 but they also had to have on on-site training earned more than let's say 112,000 so greater than we won't do equal to we'll just do 112 two, three, hit enter and it's just one let's see if it checks out so for consulting we have two right here that earned more than 107,000 but of the two looking in the on-site training the criteria for that they had to earn more than 112 not 112 which is what he did otherwise if we did greater than or equal to he'd be included but since it's greater than 112 then only this one qualifies and who's the lucky winner let me hit the home key is Danny DeVito thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up 
can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.